Comic Gun. Susie Owens. Voodoo. Zaculino. You're watching Comic TV. Archie too, they will all be here for you on comics, comics, comics TV. Comics, comics, comics TV. Fantasy and then on me, what's it gonna be now? Alternative and mainstream too, here every week for you on comics, comics. Comics TV, Comics TV, Comics, Comics, Comics TV. <laughs> to the world of comic books. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Steve Prisbella. And each and every week we try and bring you up to date on interviews, reviews, and the great previews out there in the comic book world. That's right. We yes, bring you all we kinds do. of stuff. Reviews, alternatives, and mainstream, all about the whole shebang, all the kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and other things that make comic book collecting and reading a great hobby. Like what? Like, uh... Toys and toys and plastic bags and little cardboard boxes. And yeah, computer games, all the fun stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, this week we have some great reviews. What do we have? Oh, we've got Bear Bulbs to do a review of what we're going to be doing. Real cool, interesting book. We've got a book from our uh, our normal cameraman Jim, who's been absent for a few weeks. He's been doing some comic book reviews. We're going to yeah, do a quick been, one. He's been absent-minded for a few weeks. Who else do we have? Yeah, we got Predator Kindred and. A couple of Magnus Robot Fighters, some really interesting books this week. That's right, and we've got part two of the Don Rosa interview. Yes. Good interview. Little Donald Duck Rosa. That's right. Yes. So let's kick off today's show with first comic book review. Yes, that's me. This week, for my first review, I'm going with Predator Kindred, number two of four, $2.50 from Dark Horse Comics. Yes, written by Jason Lamb. Art is by Brian O'Connell, and the ink is Bruce <laughs> Patterson. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. 20 years ago, Buddy was camping with his father, and his father was brutally slain by a predator when he was out hunting. Well, 20 years, this predator is back to haunt Buddy again. This time, it's hunting his daughter and a gang of criminals which have escaped from the prison. This book was really interesting. It's graphic, but not graphic. It's written well, but not written well. It's drawn well, but not drawn well. All in all, this is a really weird book. What I liked about this book was it was straying off from the, the regular Predator series. Uh, basically, this Predator is only killing bad guys, criminals and people who are abusing people. Like this one girl, um, her boyfriend's beating her up and he comes out with a knife to kill her and oh, there goes his whole insides blown away. What I didn't like about this book, like I said, it's drawn out. Uh, they're making this four issues. They could have made this only two issues and covered the whole same storyline. Um, they're telling you stuff that makes no sense and really don't care about. All in all, this is sort of slow for a Predator story. Not, like I said, it's it's not descriptive enough. Uh, the art is sort of, too, sort of cartoony, not the basic that you're used to out of Image and Dark Horse Comics. Collectability. No, this is not collectible. <laughs> and this is definitely not a hot book. I would think twice about picking this one up. got some comics news. That's right. Rob Liefeld is making his own version of Captain America after Marvel 
pulled him from the title. Can you believe this? This guy won't quit. He Agent will laugh. America is what it will be called. The project will be drawn down. Drawn by Jeff Loeb, who formerly wrote Captain America, Stephen Platt, or Stephen Platt, Liefeld, and John Sabal. According to him, it will be a combo of Jack Kirby's The Fighting American and Archie's The Shield. Let me say something in this right now. They had one out already, U.S. Agent, mm -hmm. that was absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. That was a spin-off to Captain America. There will never be another one. This Liefeld, give it up. Give it up! Create your own characters. Don't try and... Create your own characters! Yeah! Don't try and go off to something else. He's upset. Just does nothing but tick me off. Tick him off. But after making its run with Heroes Reborn, Wildstorm is kicking off New Horizons. Yes, this is a plan to show Wildstorm sticking to its core titles. Grifto, Grifter, which is one of my favorite, will be canceled and rejoin the Wildcats. Yay! Backlash and Taboo will be canceled and will go into Booth's new title, Wildcore. New creative directions and teams on DV8, Wetworks, and Stormwatch. Why can't you guys come up with something other than wild? Why has everything got to be wild? Well, something I read, I think Wild Core is somebody else. Somebody else. Yeah, but you have Wild Cats, Wild Storm, Wild Core. Come on! Wild Cats! Wild Cats! This is a good song. Yeah, it was a good song, but there's Wild again. Andy Mangles of www.mania.com reported that Warner Brothers is producing a new series of DC superheroes cartoons. The first will be Jack Kirby's New Gods. This will be followed by Aquaman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, The Spectre, and Shazam! Shazam! But don't expect these new uh, cartoons Characters. Yes, to appear until early 1999. A few years in production. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take off. We're going to go into my first comic book review. Actually, Holy. what I'm going to do is I've got a bunch of real quick ones because these are books that I've reviewed in the past. Let's see, the first one I've got is Arcana, number nine from Wells and Clark, $2.25. It's a good story. It's a good book with a decent story, actually. And it's got decent art. Check it out. That's pretty simplistic. Yeah, Next really is Best of Endem. Strip Fanzine, a compilation of comics from Croatia. Okay, so I can't read the book, but the art is very good in some stories. And you can tell what some of the stories are about just by reading the pictures. Thanks to Darko of Croatia, who I met over the internet for sending me this free copy. Next, is it free? Next, I've got Modesty Blaze. I think it's Blaze. Blaze Blaze. I'm gonna go with Blaze. From Comics Review. It's another excellent compilation of the Greenwood Made. It's a bit expensive at $5.95. Read them anyhow. These are really good stories when they're all put together like Is that like Robin Hood? Uh, no, not quite. Oh. A little better looking. Okay. And last is Adventure Strip Digest number four. This is an excellent book. Very similar in story type to Modesty Blaze. Great art and story at a good price of $2.50. These are all good reading material. Not one, well, except Endem, because I can't really read that one. It's a bad read, but otherwise they're all good books. They're worth reading. Read them, enjoy them, and uh, tell your friends about them. Or maybe tell them you saw them here, and I'll tell them your friends yeah. about them. Or tell your friends to watch the show, and I'll tell them about Something them. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Steve, what do you got now? Oh, my next review that is going to be really, really cool. Magnus Robot Fighter number two. $2.50 from Acclaim Comics. Now remember, Acclaim is re-releasing all their titles. Eternal Warriors, Magnus Robot Fighter, Did Solar Man well? and the they're Anim. Doing well. They're doing very well. You know the video game sold out? Yes, it is. The writer is Tom Painter. Payer. The artist is Mike McCone, and inker is a friend of ours, Mark McKenna. Yes, we did talk to Mark McKenna a couple times. Magnus is shot in the forehead. Ouch. It could have hurt a little bit. Oh. His body is taken to the hospital, but yet the ambulance driver says something's wrong. Try and bring this guy back to life. As he's in the emergency room, this silvery ooze starts coming out of his forehead, which is his liquid life, as he calls it. He comes back to life. He has to travel to a time vault to understand what's going on. He was not supposed to be part machine. He is part machine. He goes back to the Good Shepherd, which is a creature that raised him. It was part machine, part human, part ugh. Looked like a little uh, munchkin with big old teeth. Um, 
He finds out that the Good Shepherd is actually bad. He was actually raising humans at this institute to eat them. Uh, yeah, Magnus was very ticked off, so he ripped the Good Shepherd's head off and threw it in a time vault. Well, time vault. 2,000 years later, the time vault is opened up, and his arch enemy, whatever his arch enemy of the week is, has the head of the Good Shepherd, which knows how to destroy Magnus. This was a very, very good read. I never really liked the old Magnus books. I sat down and read this one. It kept my interest up right from beginning to end. Uh, the artwork was fabulous. Uh, it's a different kind of story. Um, the way they draw Magnus, of course, he's big and bulky and got muscles galore, but he's also got more of a human side than the old one. He's got feelings and understanding towards the humans. Collectability, I'd say no. Most of these aren't collectible. These are like basic books. But on a rating, I'd give this one a hot. Pick this one up, read it. It was a really, really good book. And that's what my second review was on. Well, that's great, Steve. Why, well, thank you, Michael. I've got an interesting book here. And what is it? Well, it's Vampirella Lives, number one from Harris Comics. It's, uh, from, Harris? Yes, it's from December, and it was $3.50. This is a special photo edition, which features pics of the brand spanking new vampy model on the front, the back, and there's another picture for another ad near the back. And, yeah. I um, have to say, this is probably the best looking Vampirilla model they've had yet. I like the first one, who's yeah, now she's Evangeline. Evangeline. Yeah, she's cute. Um, I, I thought she was cute. She was really nice. She said hi to us. I got to take a couple pictures with her. The second one, obviously nobody liked her because she... Well, I think she went off to do something else. Still doesn't matter. I, I Everybody I talked to thought she was too far-fetched for a Vampirilla. She, she didn't have the vamp. She was good. Nah, she didn't have the Vampirilla look. Now this one, she's got a sinister look. And she definitely looks like a vampy. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, as shallow as this may seem, our little conversation here, I did read the comic book. Oh. And I have to say that the book isn't too bad. This is about the comeback. I don't know. I don't remember what the end of uh, Vampirella. She was killed, and she was her heart was taken out. That's and right. She was supposed to be dead forever. And what this book is Surprise. is the return of Vampirella. She uh, there's it, they're in Whitechapel, and this guy I forget what he is. He's uh, he's like uh, uh, no 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 he's oh the sorcerer to bring her back to life. Uh, yeah, he's something. So what happens it's like a is geomancer. she comes flying out of the ground and uh, she's kind of white and this guy meets her and they tear up a couple people. He's like a vampire, a vampire killer and they in this book there's hemorrhage and there's nicks and um, they're a cute couple. Yeah, they're they're they cute. vomit on each other. Excellent. Well, hemorrhage, hemorrhage is cute. Or I mean, Nixon. Ah, yeah. He's cute, yeah. But anyhow, it, the book isn't too bad. Uh, the, the color is very good. The story's not bad. I, I, you know, if you like the Vampirella stuff, you're going to like this, regardless of, uh, of what's going on. It's a good book. And I have to say that uh, this vampy model, I hope that she's I in like Chicago them. when I go. <laughs> I hope she's in Chicago and Mike goes too. So I could get some pictures of her and yes. tell Steve that I met her. And make me die. That's right. Make Steve die. Bite so me. anyhow, bite me. she's got some long hair. It's probably a wig. Mmm, could be. Could be a wig. Yeah. It looks like it could be fake. Looks fake! Anyhow, that doesn't really matter. She, um, the Vampirella Lives, number one, from December. I don't know, they must have a couple issues up by now. Not a bad book. At $3.50, it's a little expensive, but these pictures are probably worth the money, so I'd go out and pick this one up. Hmm. Next, what we're going to do is, we're going to do a quick, 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 dual review, which we're going to do over here. What we've got is... Bear Bulbs Underworld 2. This is by Kaz. The book is now $9.95. Holy moly, that's a lot of bread. Yes, it is. It's from Fanographic Book, FBI. What we've got here is we've got a calculation of about 100 stories. Close. There's 95 pages here. And 90, about 95 stories, 90 stories. Close. It's, it's an interesting book. These are... Adult stories only. Yeah. It only has four pictures per story. Yeah, it's... they're four panel stories. And a lot of them are Adults. swearing. Yeah. Swearing. They deal they with drugs, drugs, smoking. Smoking. And the inflated lungs. Sex and weird yeah. stuff. Some but weird stuff. There's some, some interesting things in here. Some of them are pretty funny. 
Some of them are very funny. Some of them, the very first one, you open it up and uh, he did this one. Uh, some of them he's got dates on, so you know when he did them. Uh, but I don't know where these actually appeared. Underworld. I don't think they appeared in any afternoon papers, that's well, as, for as, sure. As, as it says here, it's called a peanut for paranoid. Pogo for punks, Popeye for the postmodern. So that gives you an idea. It's there's a there's a fake porky pig and daffy duck in here and stuff, and they blow the brain. Mickey Mouse, yeah. Mouse, yeah. Mickey Mouse, yeah. Tweety but Bird. It, it's it's a funny book. I like it. It is funny. I like the two. Like I said, it's it it deals with adult situations though. This this book definitely isn't for kids. This is an expensive book though. I mean, it's it's printed on a better stock paper. It's printed on a you know a better stock cover. Yeah. Okay, that's better. No, oh, the paper too. Oh. Paper sticker paper. I don't know what problem that is. In other words, it wasn't photostatic, the local quick copy. Yeah. Well, Phantom Book Graphics always puts out quality books. Yeah. And it's not, I don't know, $9.95. It's probably a little expensive for somebody to want to go and pay. But it's up. still good. Yeah, I, th I think it was worth the $9.95. It uh, made, uh, made for an interesting read. Uh -huh. Definitely an interesting read. Like I said, most of the stories had three or four panels, mm -hmm. but um, some of them are funny. It's like... Uh, okay, here's one that we could yeah. actually... Uh, there's a girl says somewhere in Tibet, she's crawling up this, you know, climbing see up this the, mountain. The almighty guru up yeah. at the top of the mountain. So she's, she's a good-looking girl in a skirt, you know, in a dress. She's climbing up to the top of the mountain. She gets up there. Greetings, my child. You have journeyed a long and difficult path to see me. As you know, I can answer only one question per visitor. Now, you may ask your question. And she goes, do I look fat? And then he's like, he flies he falls off the over. It's, it's just like that kind of stupid thing. Stupid humor that, that's actually funny. But it, yeah, it's funny. That one, that was a good, that was a clean one. And it was, uh, they're, they're typical things. And some of them, you look at them and they're like, how stupid, yeah. Stupid but funny. I, I give it a thumbs up. I yeah. thought it was good. Bear Bulbs, Underworld 2 by Cass. I give that one a thumbs up also. And that's... Wow, we agreed on a dual review. Dual oh, review. And it was uh, uh, an alternative one. Yes, too. and I liked it. Very good. Let's kick off the last bit of our comic TV news today. The Soldier of God project that Peter King is doing with Boneyard Press will not be drawn by John Torisi. Since... He was having a problem taking orders and not meeting his deadline. It will now be done by Jason Rodriguez and possibly one more artist to be named. The book's release date has also been pushed up to September. The Comic Club, the internet's largest email comic enzyme, Ezine, <laughs> whatever, will be celebrating its one year anniversary this month, April. John Daly reported that the anniversary was for their online edition. It had been originally started in September of 95 as a fanzine. That's right. Fanzine. Fanzine. That's right. Helix Comics launched their own website at www.helixcomics.com. The site features games, chat rooms, and more. So you might want to check that out if you like the new Helix line from DC. Yes. Top Cow has said they plan to do a Witchblade Darkness crossover sometime around November. That's it for the Comics News this week. And Comics News is compiled by the Comic Club. Thanks, guys. Yep, the ones who just did their one-year anniversary. Yes, they did. Next, we've got uh, a little press release for Mad. Mad Magazine. April 1st, Mad. What, me worry? Yes, that's the one. Did they, they relaunched Mad Magazine on April 1st. Uh, everybody thought it was a joke, but it wasn't. What they've done is they've taken the magazine and they've tried to make it more current. Let's see, kind of, let's see, the latest fads, trends, and current events. The new logo is similar to the former one, but it is slanted to reflect, Mad, to reflect Mad's new slant on humor. I don't know. They're, uh, the infamous What Me Worry Kid, it's, it, as Steve said, Alfred, Alfred E. Newman, e. Newman will continue to spoil the covers of the magazine. New writers and artists have been added, including Peter Cooper, uh, Girl Talk editor, Peggy Duty, cartoonist Bill Ray. These are a lot of people that you've uh, you've seen in, in books I've reviewed and stuff like that. Kevin Pope, uh, see, Sergio Argon. Uh, he should still be. I don't know. Oh, he, mad is not mad without Sergio Argon. I don't know who else. But 
It's interesting. We, If everything goes well, we're going to be doing an interview with Mad's editors in the next few weeks, and we'll let you in on that. Yep. Wow. So, that's a little, a little interesting. Joey Barafuco's Guide to Chivalry. Yeah, we did that last week. Yeah, I reviewed that. I we reviewed is that. that. The new issue? Is that the new book? That must be the new book, because me, we did the uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't review seem like, on the uh, racism that I yeah. thought was hilarious, because how true it was. Hooked on Ebonics? Yeah, that's the same <laughs> one. I don't know. Well, we got to stick with it and see. Right now, why don't we go off and do our uh, comics TV interview, interview, and we'll do that this week. Okay. And what do we got? We got part two of the Don Rosa, famed Don Rosa from DuckTales, and let's... Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. All the fun stuff from Walt Disney. And uh, let's do it. Hey, Don. Have you ever done anything besides the Disney stuff? Just amateur stuff I used to do, you know, in fanzines. Yeah. But it's professionally uh, only only Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge. Not Disney. Right. It's Donald exactly. Duck and Uncle no, Scrooge. I would never even say that. No, I've got no particular interest in Disney, but I uh, like Carl Barks. And Carl Barks wrote and drew the best comic books in the right. history, and that's that's what I grew up loving. Right. You uh, in, in Europe, we were talking a little bit more about uh, uh, Europe and, and how their comic tastes are a little different than yeah, it's, it's, there's not a lot of uh, superhero stuff over there. Well, there's none. And, uh, as I can tell. So th this this would be the uh, cream of the crop then. Well, doing the Disney with Donald Duck, yeah, this is uh, the Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck comics are the by far the most popular comic books anywhere in the world still outside of the United States. There's nothing in America that can compare to how popular these characters are in like Norway or Italy. They're they're like national heroes, and I really can't even. I'm always trying to figure out why it is. I think partly it's because these are the first form of entertainment to come out after World War II. It's yeah. part of it. Oh, maybe. But it's it's also uh, the Europeans, uh, I mean, to this day, are more interested in not so much the violence and the action. They like the plot and the characterization. Yeah. So these comics are, uh, and they like variety in Europe. For instance, they might have a couple of superheroes in Europe, but once they've got one or two, that's all they don't, yeah. that's enough. Yeah, that's you know, they don't have to have need. 50 or 100 or 300. <laughs> <laughs> they just have two, and that's plenty. And beyond that, it starts to get kind of rep repetitive and silly. So they've got, but they science fiction, westerns. Oh, you, if you want to see any western comic books, you got to go to Europe. Go to Europe, sure. Uh, and they, the, still, some of the uh, the most popular comics after the Disney's in uh, Scandinavia and Italy are the, the westerns. They even have uh, theme parks for western comic books. Is that right? Uh, Do you uh, uh, have you been to Europe? Yeah, I get uh, a nice free trip to Europe at least twice a year. That's get about out the only the only perk in this job. Wow, that's not a bad. You, you perk, lose though. the original art, you lose the, uh, you lose the royalties, you lose all that. But I get free trips to Europe, and I get treated like a minor rock and roll star. Is that right? So you get to see firsthand how people go. Crazy oh yes, and they, they'll, they'll people stand in line five hours just to get my signature. And, Is that right? But it's also kind of depressing because uh, over here, uh, you know, I, uh, I've got plenty of time to do. Uh, <laughs> Anything because I've about ten people all day. I want want a signature. Well, but over not there, how many people here read Greek? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but over there is where the real fans are. But there's so many of them. As a result, you know, I can't do them nice sketches or drawings that I can be proud to give them. I can just. Uh, well, that's uh, that's that's great that you get to see exactly how. Uh, oh, it does does my heart good to go to a. Uh, a world where uh, these characters are still as popular as they were when I was when I was growing up. Right. Well, Mr. Rosa, thank you for uh, letting us watch your work here and uh, for all your insights in the uh, comic business, especially well, in Europe. Yeah. Well. Do you, when you sign your name in Greece, do you have to sign it with the N? I haven't yet uh, been to Greece, but I might. That'll be fun to try. Yeah. Give it the a shot. The Tavpoa. <laughs> I have to work on that right now. <laughs> Thanks, Don Rosa from uh, all those great Disney comics. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Damn ink. That's great. That really is great. Uh, Forty dollars when I was when I had time to, to do them. Now when I'm in Europe, I do them for free because it's a whole different system over there. Yeah. In America, you have to charge something for them. Right. For my third and final review this week, I'm going with the Black Pearl number five of five, two dollars and ninety-five cents from Dark Horse Comics. The writer on this one is Mark. 
Hamill, yes, the infamous Luke Skywalker. Art is by H.M. Baker, and the ink is by Dan Schaefer. The search for the vigilante Black Pearl continues, and just when the authorities think they have him caught, boom, he pulls a quick switch. And oh, you know the rest of the story, blah, 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 happily ever after, ta-da, ta-da, see you later, flies off in the sunset with Princess Leia and Chewbacca, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was very disappointed in this series. Um, I thought after the first and second book, maybe it would pick up, but it just didn't pick up. The first book that showed violence, blood, sex, naked women. It was really, you know, I thought, hey, maybe the series will do something. It was poor, far-fetched, but what do you expect from Luke Skywalker? You know, he's out there in another planet anyways. That was excellent, though. I gotta say, it was very, very well drawn. The women looked very good. The men looked very really bulky and really well defined. But like I said, without a story being there, the book means nothing. Collectability, yes, because of how hot Star Wars is right now. Um, Mark Hamill's books, which The Black Pearl is his first series, has is, is been selling out because people just want to hop on the Star Wars bandwagon. So hey, here's something by Mark Hamill. Let's pick it up. And my rating is not hot. I was very disappointed with all five parts. Think twice before you pick this up because it'll probably end up in a bag, all five parts, for about 100 bucks. Think about it. Think so? I know so. Why? Because right now you can go to stores and part one selling for like 17 and a quarter. Yeah. Honest to God, it's ridiculous. Why? Because it's him? Because it's Mark Hamill and everybody's jumping on the Star Wars bandwagon. But it, you said it's not good. I know. Carrie Fisher could come out and draw a book with Stickman and it'd sell like crazy, too. Okay. I know. Who's jumping on Carrie Fisher? Who's jumping on Carrie Mark Hamill. No, that's right. They're brother and sister. Han Solo, you pig. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in the series. Solo hand? Solo hand with Ooh. Joe Backy. <laughs> okay, my last book is John Lewis. Uh, book called Spectacles. Number Spectacles. one. Yeah, you may have re you remember you may remember John Lewis. Uh, I don't know, must have been a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half ago. I reviewed a book called True Swamp. Very good book. Don't John remember. was doing it. And I enjoyed that book. And for some reason he just decided after, I don't know, five, six issues that it was over. He wasn't gonna do anymore. It's time to move on. It's taken a long time for him to come out with anything else. Obviously he's working a part time job somewhere because he wouldn't be making a living off his absolutely <laughs> have a dozen issues. But this is not a bad book. $2.95 cents from Alternative Press to the guys who bring you Indie Magazine. And basically what this is, is a bunch of uh, stories that have a lot of words to them. And some of it is uh, off to the side of the panel. Actually, in, like its own panel because uh, they're not all word balloons. And there's a few different stories, actually. One, two, three, four stories. Or actually three stories and then a the letters column. They're not bad. His art is very, very sketchy, not real detailed. Childish. Yeah, I've seen childish. This isn't childish, childish, but it's not the greatest stuff. And these books, I mean, these stories are not bad, but they're not that great. I mean, give them, a, give them credit. I mean, the True Swamp one, I, I like quite a bit. This, this is a mediocre. So what's your point? I'd have to, either, if I had to give it a one or the one way or the other, I'd have to say no. The other. Yes, it's the other. I'd have to say no. If I said if uh, the, the other option is to give it give it a couple of issues, try it out. Anyhow, my name is Mike Rizzo, and I'm Steve Prisbilla. And don't forget to check out our Comics TV website. And as we say each and every week, reading is your best investment. That's don't right. forget to do it. And like we also see each and every week, when you stop in that comic book shop to pick up that great comic that we reviewed today, That's right. tell them you've seen it on Comics, Comics TV. TV. Bye.